antisocial, narcissistic, easily offended, a weak conscience and aggressive behavior. Those were the words of a Dutch psychiatrist about the man we are covering today. Ever since he was young, he would get himself in trouble with the law, but no one could have ever guessed what he would get himself involved in. He turned from violent robberies to cold-blooded murders. If you wanted someone killed, he would be your guy to get it done. By now, he has been accused of being involved in many murders, but one in particular sticks out. The murder of a seemingly innocent Iranian man living in the Netherlands. Who was this Iranian man? And why would the Iranian government have him killed on Dutch soil? That's the question. This is the story of Nofal F. Nofal, also known as Nofel or Belly because of his posture, is a Dutch national of Moroccan descent. He was born on the 9th of September 1980 in Rotterdam. However, he grew up in the Amsterdam area. From 1991 to 1996, Naufal attended the Pantare school in Amstelveen, a school that is specifically for children who have a hard time learning or experience other personal difficulties. Ever since Naufal was young, he would suddenly burst out in anger and display aggressive behavior, which made him very unpredictable. As he got older, these anger issues would only seem to get worse. At a very young age, Naufal started venturing into a life of crime. He got involved in robberies, and because of his anger issues, these robberies often turned violent fairly quick. At age 16, Naufal was sentenced to half a year of juvenile detention for assault and a street robbery. Shortly after, he was convicted two more times by the juvenile court for weapon possession and once again, excessive violence. Excessive violence would become the main theme in his life. Be sure to remember this. All these convictions did not seem to guide the young Naufal towards making the decisions to drastically change his life. He remained heavily involved in committing serious crimes. In 2002, 22-year-old Nelfal got arrested once again for yet another violent armed robbery. This time, the judge ordered him to be examined by a psychiatrist for an in-depth evaluation of him as a person. They deemed it to be abnormal to commit such heinous crimes so frequently. The psychiatrist diagnosed a personality disorder with antisocial and narcissistic characteristics. He also stated that Nelfal was easily offended and possessed a weak conscience meaning that his violent acts and the severe impact they had on his victims did not really bother him. A prime example of this weak conscience is that shortly after the diagnosis, he extorted someone. This led to him being arrested and sentenced to 20 months in prison, as well as TBS with conditions in 2004. TBS is a measure that the Dutch judicial system uses to protect society from people who commit crimes while suffering from a serious disorder or defective development. There are two sorts of TBS compulsory TBS and conditional TBS. Compulsory TBS means that someone will be under 24-7 surveillance in a jail-like environment and will receive compulsory help to battle their disorder and improve their development. Conditional TBS means that someone is allowed to remain in freedom but has to abide by specific rules and conditions, as well as attend compulsory check-ins that should treat their disorder and improve their development. The average age of people who receive TBS is 44. So Naufal, with his 22 years of age, was very young. After he violated his conditions, the sentence was converted to compulsory TBS, and Naufal got arrested and put under 24-7 surveillance. Eventually, he was released in 2012, but nothing had changed. In fact, Naufal started alliances with several different groups of criminals in the Amsterdam area. Being known for his excessive use of violence and the ease in which he exerted it, Naufal was a good asset to have on their side. It remained quiet around him for some time, until the far end of 2012. Even though he was already notorious in the underworld of Amsterdam, after what happened on that Saturday evening, December 29th in 2012, Nelfal solidified his top spot as a man that was absolutely ruthless. One of the alliances Nelfal started was with Gwinnett Martha, at that point in time, the biggest kingpin of Amsterdam. Gwinnett had gotten into a feud with a man named Benelf A over a missing shipment of drugs. Ben Oof decided to have Gwinnett's right-hand man killed, after which Gwinnett decided to take revenge in a way that was unheard of for the Netherlands. He allegedly recruited Naufal, who recruited other hitmen, to commit an attack on Ben Oof. On that Saturday evening in December 2012, Ben Oof, together with two friends, was lured to a neighbourhood in Amsterdam. Out of nowhere, two cars pulled up. Multiple men got out of the cars and started firing their automatic rifles at the car Ben Oof and his friends were sat in. They fled out of the car and ran through the neighborhood. 
all while the hitmen were chasing them. Ben Oof managed to jump in a nearby canal, resulting in the attackers losing sight of him. His two other friends were not able to flee and got coldly executed from close range. The intended target, Ben Oof, later spoke to the police on the phone and said Nelfal was one of the shooters. You guys are severely underestimating him. He has got an entire graveyard on his name. If he kills someone, he does not leave a trace. Once he struck someone in the leg and got jailed, soon as he got out, he struck him in the leg again. Saying he is a psycho is mildly put. Nelfal became a prime suspect of the attack, but after further investigation, police had to admit that they did not have enough evidence to prosecute him. This most definitely would not be the last time Nelfal was connected to a murder. However, instead of doing it himself, Nelfal became a broker. If somebody wanted someone to be killed, they could give the assignment to Nelfal, and he would take care of it. A prime example of this was the hit on Samir Scarface in 2014, the Netherlands' biggest kingpin that lived in Spain most of the time. Samir was sat with Nelfal and one other man named Najib Himish outside a cafe called All in One, having a drink. Samir wasn't someone who would be seen in the open often, so he must have trusted the situation. And that would turn out to be a big mistake. Out of nowhere, two armed men ran up to their table and struck Samir multiple times. Camera footage allegedly showed an unbothered Nelfal and Najib calmly walk away from the table and disappear from the crime scene. Rumours immediately started swirling that Nelfal set this attack up. Just a year later, Nelfal would set up a hit once again, though this time without success. In this instance, the target was Peter Piotr A, a criminal in the underworld of Amsterdam that did a bit of everything. On the 5th of November 2015, Peter stepped into the Opel Antara of his mother. As he wanted to drive off, a Volkswagen Golf came racing towards him. Two men immediately opened fire, to which Peter stepped on the gas as a reaction. In all panic, he drove over the sidewalk, through the bushes, and crashed into a small pond. He stayed underwater, hiding behind the engine block, as the two men kept firing off shots. After days of investigating the incident, police determined that there were three men involved. During the investigation into the suspects, it became clear that once again, none other than Nelfal was the orchestrator of all this. Leaked PGP messages revealed that he was angry after he heard that the hit was not successful. He demanded immediate answers from one of the shooters, named Atif M. Some of Nelfal's PGP messages read, Is he dead? Does police have the getaway car? Why wasn't the car set afire in the garage? You could have set it afire before the police found the car in that garage. Atif M answered submissively, It could not have been set afire immediately. We did not have another car to hop over to. We still needed it later. I am not trying to play you. We have discussed everything. We cleaned the entire car with ammonia. I just hope that dog is gone. Well, Peter R wasn't gone. They thought they'd killed him, but he managed to survive with six shots to the belly. And here's where Nelfal's story gets truly fascinating. On the 15th of November, 2015, Nelfal messaged Randall D, a well-known hitman in the Netherlands, via his PGP phone. I have a nice job for you. The target is some Turkish guy in Almira. He is already observed. He is in his 40s. I have no idea why he has to go to sleep. I don't care about that. Haha. <laughs> he leaves every morning, 7 o'clock for work, drives a white van, fix a house in Almira. To which Randall replied, why does he have to go? Nafal replied, bro, some Turkish guy. He just works why he has to sleep, die. I don't know, and I don't even want to know. Ha ha ha. In fact, this wasn't some Turkish guy. Their target was Mohamed Reza Kolahi Samadi, an Iranian man that was sentenced to 34 years earlier to death in his home country after he committed one of Iran's most infamous bombings ever. The bombing took place on June 28, 1981 in Tehran. 74 leading officials of the Islamic Republican Party, the IRP, were killed after two powerful bombs went off during a meeting of the party. Mohammed Reza was accused of planting one bomb and therefore sentenced to death in Iran. However, he had already fled the country and entered the Netherlands as a refugee somewhere in the 90s, where he registered himself as Ali Mutamid. In the Netherlands, he had started working as a technician for a Dutch company. For decades, Mohammed Reza's cover worked, but at some point, Tehran discovered that technician Ali Mutamid, who quietly worked in the Netherlands, was in fact one of Iran's most wanted men, Mohammed Reza Samadi. Hitman Nalfal had successfully recruited Randall to carry out the murder for 130,000 euros, 
but just days before it was supposed to take place, Randall got arrested for his involvement in several other murders. Nelfall managed to recruit another hitman, and on the 15th of December 2015, 7 o'clock in the morning, it was go time. As expected, Mohamed Reza left his house around 7 a.m., walked towards his van, and just as he was about to put his belongings in the car, a man walked up to him and shot him in the head from close range. It only took one bullet. Why did Mohamed Reza have to be killed? For most people who knew about him, he was just another father, working a normal job, living a normal life. Well, those people obviously did not know about his past in Iran. Was there a possibility that the Iranian government had finally gotten their revenge? Stick with me. A year after this attack, Nelfold got arrested in Dublin, Ireland. This was actually by accident and caught the Irish police by surprise. The house he was staying at was already under observation, as police suspected it of being a safe house used by a notorious Irish crime group, the Kinnahats. Upon entering the house, they stood face to face with Nelfold. He told them he was a man named Omar, the same name stated in his fake passport. He was brought in for interrogation, and his fingerprints eventually revealed his true identity. The Irish police immediately informed the Dutch police, and not much later, Nelfall was extradited to the Netherlands, where he was suspected of being the mastermind behind numerous murders. In 2018, he was sentenced to 18 years in jail for the failed hit on Peter R. However, particularly the case on Mohamed Reza was of interest. After investigation of the Dutch police revealed that this man, Ali Mutamed, was actually Mohamed Reza Kolahi Samadi, a man who had committed one of Iran's biggest bombings. The Department of Security and Justice started a separate investigation. In 2019, the Dutch government publicly announced their suspicion that the Iranian government had ordered this assassination on Dutch soil. In a letter, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Stef Bloch, and Minister of Interior Affairs, Kasia Olongren, wrote that the Netherlands, through the European Union, would impose modest sanctions on Iran because of the strong indications that foreign and domestic security service saw that Iran had a hand in the assassinations of state enemies in Western Europe. Further sanctions could be imposed if Iran refused to cooperate in the investigations. A notable detail is that after the hit on Mohammed Reza, an Iranian activist named Ahmad Molanisi was also assassinated in the Netherlands in 2017. Minister Stef Bloch said, We believe that such hostile actions flagrantly violate Dutch sovereignty and are unacceptable. As a result of these killings, the Dutch government deported two Iranian diplomats from the Iranian embassy in the Netherlands. Iran has always denied all the accusations made against them. In July 2019, Naufal was sentenced to life in prison. This came after he was also held responsible for the murder of Mohammed Reza. With the help of PGP messages, prosecutors managed to build a convincing case that he was mastermind behind the assassination. 